Hello everyone, and welcome back to my complete stock career mode run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. Here is the lander rocket that brought us safely to Drez and back. And I'm thinking about Jewel this time. I'm thinking about Jewel, and I don't know if I want to land anywhere though. I'd rather do a flyby first. Just to check things out, Apollo 8, Apollo 10 style. You know, just a flyby. So I want to reconfigure this for for a flyby mission. So there are things we can remove and things we can add because uh, once we lose the weight, we can add fuel. So uh, for instance, landing struts, we won't be landing yet. We will try and land in a future mission, but not this first one. We won't need the RCS and that'll be a big fuel savings. Let's take a look at that. We've got... it'll be about a ton. Uh, we won't need an independent unit like this, and that's a lot too, that's 0.3. An inline reaction wheel, we don't need it because we have this one here. Uh, we won't need a decoupler here. Oh no, wait, yes we do. Yes we do, because we have to bring this separately. Okay, let's keep that. RCS ports aren't necessary. Ladders aren't necessary. Oops, not that. Ladders aren't necessary. These rockets aren't necessary. I'll keep the power here, I guess. I guess it's not really necessary either. Uh, doesn't seem like quite as much as I might hope to shed. Uh, I guess we could dump all of this. And instead of this can, add one of these. Might barely lift off the ground like that. Well, uh, nowadays we have tweakables, so I guess I could sort of do a three-quarter thing just in case. Do we really want to haul all this with us? Doesn't seem right. Hmm. Wish we had tapering cans. Uh, I just don't like the look of it, really. How much weight is that? 0 0.1? Well, that's... For the look of the thing, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have removed some weight, but I haven't actually added fuel. We can add this tank back. Well, we can add a bigger one, like this. Whoops. Like so. That doesn't look right, though. Oh, there, there's a shower one these days? Yeah, this is... Uh, no, not that one. This one. How heavy is this? Practically the same mass. That's interesting. Oh, I know I could do to add the mass. I could extend these instead. I could... Yeah. Okay, so yeah. That, that looks about right. There's no point trying to put a small engine in decoupling here uh, or here. Because the nukes are just going to be more efficient anyway. Even if you were to try and... Uh, even shedding, trying to shed this mass and adding a smaller engine, I think the calculation would be that the nukes would be, would be more efficient. So I'll just keep it that way. Do we have enough science though? We don't need a seismometer. We're not going to land anywhere. And we don't need this ladder either. But, but Perhaps we can sneak some more on here now. Let's in fact uh, load up on goo containers. We'll only have one of these though. Oh well, how, wait a minute, how am I going to return it back to the surface? Well... Huh. 
Maybe I could take two of these, but then I can't put them all around. There's a matter of balance here. Yeah, I, I don't want it to be unbalanced. Uh, having two goo containers on the side is okay. Well, I guess we could have four and just limit it to that. Let's see. Yep. Our parachute situation might not, not be good though. I'm not too sure if we're really good on the parachutes right now. To add the fuel back, we can just add them to the top here now. Hmm. Oh, okay. I think I've got a plan. Not a very good plan, though. It's got mean that things got well, not two of them, just one. Land a bit wonky though. We could put one here and one here. Um, hmm. The differential forces might pull these apart. Oh well, uh, well this is Kerbal, so I guess we'll try it. Uh, barometers are fine. Uh, let me actually move some of the thermometers on this one. Hmm. I don't know if this is a horribly bad idea or not. But I think our Kerbal should still be safe, so let's let's just go with that. So this will be Lambda 3. Let me check action groups. And action group one is the solar panels, and there are no others. That's fine. Yeah, all right. I think uh, I think we're ready to go. Now we do have much more powerful engines now. We've got the mainsails, but I don't see a need to replace this right now. It'll just be replacing it with my Koyu's rocket from the earlier series. Uh, so I, I don't think I want to repeat myself that much. I'll try and come up with a new launch system with the mainsails uh, some other time. Let's see if this one could uh, make it to Jewel and back and uh, do some science along the way. Alright, so our crew, it's a long mission. Uh, I think I'm going to give it to Bob. So let's have Bob do it. Alright, hopefully I don't have too much mass on this and I haven't misjudged things too badly. I have added mass to this, I think. Yeah, so hopefully it'll be all right. Let's let's take a look at the launch pad and see. Maybe I should uh, have an abort sequence of some kind. Nope. Let's just take it out to the launch pad and see how it works. It's got a bit of the wigglies. Maybe I should strut the top portion a little bit better. Uh, but, but, uh, we need to time warp anyway. We need to get Jewel in the correct position for a transfer. Right now, it is... It's not too far off, is it? Yeah, that's, that's not, that's not that bad, actually. It should be a 96 degree angle, so... Anyway, let me, uh, focus on one of the flags. Let's say... Can we switch to that flag here? No, let's focus on the moon. Yeah, switch to that flag. And now with our focus on the flag, I'm going to time warp. 
This flag's been here for a while. Oh no, I was wrong. Uh, obviously, Jewel is not going to be going faster than us, so... Actually, we're going to have to go all the way around in order to get into the right position. It's not close at all. We have already passed the Jewel transfer point. Okay, I think this should be around 90-ish 90, 90 degrees. It actually should be 96 degrees, but I, I guess I'm a little bit closer than that. Alright, uh, let's transfer back to our rocket on the pad. Now, Bob, of course, wasn't too worried about spending uh, 110 days or so in in this capsule on the top of this pad, because after all, he's going to be spending something more along the lines of 600 days in it. So, SAS is on, throttle is up. Let's hope my modifications have not altered the survivability of this rocket. And lift off. <laughs> Okay, just notice I have a parachute hanging out on this here. Let me just check that. Okay, let me move that up. I'm also considering having these three parachutes fire first, and only after they deploy and slow the craft down, deploy the other two. That might be a thing, but I'll decide that on the way back. Hopefully I'll remember. Again, I've been uh, playing with uh, all sorts of other mods in other saves that I have. Uh, for instance, uh, I have a real solar system save where I've got the engine ignition mod as well. And so shutting off your engines like this to close to apoapsis, not really a good thing, especially when you're using engines that really only have one ignition in them and uh, can't be shut off, or rockets that uh, can restart but require ullage, or I, I guess it's ullage is how it's pronounced. In other words, uh, it requires uh, smaller rockets to fire in order to push, <clears throat> in order to push the propellant down, so that uh, it can actually ignite the rockets. If the propellant isn't uh, down at the bottom of the tank, then and isn't able to be fed into the system, the rockets won't fire. That is, I have to give them credit. That is a very neat mod. I I have no idea how they managed to do uh, that alleged simulation thing, but that is fascinating. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things, uh, there are two mods that really give me nightmares. Uh, remote tech and the engine ignition, those are really tough. Deadly re-entry is not as, as, uh, as frustrating sometimes as those two. Okay, uh, roughly circular on that guy be picky. I never have been. So, Jewel. Now, I'm not sure exactly what I intend to do at Jewel. I just want to get there first. Uh, it's possible that I might actually aero break around Lathe. That was suggested in the comments by uh, by Argamus, and I think uh, I think that's not a bad idea. But uh, let let me see what the configuration of the system is before I make any plans. Oh, so uh, I'm going to need to get around Joule anyway, because I want to do the experiments. Since we're not going to be doing any landing, it makes sense to handle the experiments around Joule right now. Because, well, we're not going to make a land. Well, then again, maybe I could go to the outer moons, where maybe I'm not that interested in landing on them or something. So... I haven't really thought this out too much. I just woke up today and decided I wanted to go to Joule, so... You know, that's how it works. Um, that's... Sometimes that's all you need. Oh, 
Okay, well, we're, we've got an encounter there. Could do with a bit of a boost up, but I don't think this is the time or the place. Yeah, I guess we'll just correct that on the descending node. We'll try and get as close as possible. We'll do that during the burn instead of with the maneuver node. Okay, we've got a tiny bit of fuel left in here. Much to my annoyance because uh, not only does it mean a little bit of space junk, but but also it's really difficult to turn. It's easy to get a jewel encounter. Jewel's the easiest planet to encounter. If you're having trouble getting an encounter with some planets, maybe maybe jewel's your thing. Uh, it, I, I mean, it, you just saw me do the... It usually takes me a lot longer to get uh, encounter when I'm trying to fiddle around with maneuver nodes, but... But, uh, yep, the jewel, jewel will get you in every time. I mean, if you can't get a jewel encounter, you're definitely doing something systematically wrong. Alright, I think we should start burning. Uh, actually, we probably should have started burning a while ago. Sorry, it's in the dark. I'll uh, catch you at the end of this burn. Okay, we have an encounter. Not quite the one I was expecting. It's a little bit further out. Takes a little bit longer to get there. And uh, it's still pretty far away from Jewel itself. It was suboptimal because I, it, I, I didn't burn quite quickly enough. I should have started burning earlier so that my slow nuclear stage could actually make the burn properly. But uh, no matter, we still have plenty of fuel left. We have about two-thirds of our tank left. We're pointing in the wrong direction though. So, solar panels out, I guess. And... And yeah, I didn't take the suggestion of putting uh, little solar panels on there. I think my energy situation would still have been fine even if I didn't extend the solar panels at this point so no no worries there uh, yep so we're configured to head to Jewel let me actually get to the Jewel system in this episode um, yeah and then uh, maybe in the next episode we'll see what I can do there I don't need to get too close into Jewel since I still haven't decided... Wow, look at that uh, resulting trajectory. Jewel can give you a serious gravity assist if you need it. Um, since I haven't uh, really decided whether to hit uh, Jewel or Lathe yet. But then again, if I could um, get into Jewel right now, maybe that would be... No, no, I'll hold off on that decision. I want to see where Lathe is first. It's probably going to be in a decent position. Lathe, it's easy to get a Lathe encounter after all. Okay, I'm still pondering a life encounter, so I'll keep it there. Alright, let's bring it into the dual system. Okay, here we are in the dual system, and we are going in a very oblique angle that we'll need to fix immediately. So let's let's do such things. Um, if it lets me click on my orbit. Uh, we might have to do this like without maneuver nodes because it's going like okay well all right uh, can it slide it closer or is it gonna nope it doesn't like that huh well okay I'll do it over here then if 
if it'll give me that one again. What is up with this? Is this something I only have or, or do other people have this problem as well? Okay, we need to make sure we're going in the same direction as the Julian Moons, which is this direction. We don't need to do that much. 200 is going overboard. We can uh, do a radial burn to do the rest, and that's more efficient. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I saw it. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, a Leif periapsis. Okay, so we have a Leif encounter, and I need to figure out how much... Okay, well, let's try and... Well, I don't think I can make fine adjustments from out here. So I'll wait until I get a little bit closer before I try and figure out figure out anything about the arrow breaking. But uh, yeah, let's let's plan to arrow break around lathe. Huh? I think that's probably the best idea. I do want to get this a little bit closer to the plane of the planet uh, of the moons. So let's do that. That'll save a lot of trouble. So, looks like a good trajectory to me. I'm a little bit nervous about uh, air breaking around Leif because I've never successfully done it before. I've uh, successfully air braked around Jewel. That's, that's no problem. I know the altitude for that. I don't know the altitude for Leif. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the KSP air braking calculator. I've, I've never used this before. I knew it existed. The reason I didn't use it before is because I, I frankly don't trust it. Um, so we'll see. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I can start doing the burn here. It's more efficient to do it out here. As long as you have the right angle, let's see how much more efficient it is in fact. Oop, uh, I think I just passed that Leif encounter. Okay, that should be a Leif encounter there. Uh, well, our, our incoming trajectory is within the plane of the moons, so that's fine. Uh, we should be going counterclockwise, so that's fine. And Leif Periapsis to uh, 2,700 kilometers. All right. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So, like I was saying, uh, KSP Error Breaking Calculator is a website you can go to to input the details of your your approach and then get how deep into the atmosphere you need to be in order to get the desired orbit. I. Hmm. I I think I'm gonna sleep on this. So we've got our let let's do one experiment at least. We can do a few things actually. We can uh, EVA Bob and get the EVA report. We're high over Jewel obviously, so he can do that. And then one goo container for high over Jewel. Goo feels right at home. It feels right at home in a lot of places. Seventy science. Keep that data. I don't suppose we'll get a pressure uh, temperature reading. Pressure is totally out. Okay, so we could do high over joule with the science container, but I don't think that. Uh, I think we'll wait until we're a little bit closer to everything before I use those up. Yeah, so I'm going to think about this, ponder this a little bit, and decide whether I really want to do the Leif air break or just go for joule as what for me, which would be as usual. Um, if I did the Leif air break, it would pretty much determine that I'm going to be trying to scan Leif. If I do a Jewel air break, it's possible that I could swing by one of the other other moons and then swing back around to Jewel in the same orbit. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm going to just uh, think it over because I didn't really plan this out. So tune in next time to see what I decide on. And if I decide to do my first attempt to do my first successful air brake around late, I've failed twice, at least twice. Uh, one time, uh, it, in both cases it was unmanned, it was uh, probe. And one time I crashed, and one time I just uh, couldn't get into orbit around Lathe, uh, so I just uh, had too much energy. So yeah, so tune in next time to figure out what I do with Bob Kerman, and uh, I will try my best to keep him safe. If I think I can reasonably do that while air braking around Lathe, I will probably opt for that option, but if I'm a little bit too skittish about that, I'll go with my normal jewel thing. Not that that's not without perils. Anyway, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, maybe uh, pertaining to what I should do, whether you would rather have a jewel air break or a lathe air break, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.